You're back on stand with Kelly and Denali Chivaka. We are at standshow.org and we are talking about the courage to make a difference because this show is all about making courage contagious and we stand for freedom, truth, and government by the people, which happen to be some of my favorite things to talk about. You would know that though, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. Yes. So in this election cycle, uh, our family has been off the campaign trail for a couple years. About two years now. It's been nice. Good break. Not going to lie. <laughs> but interestingly, we keep getting sent pictures of mailers across the great state of Alaska. Kelly Chewbacca is endorsing so-and-so. So Not good why for should our you state. vote for them? Like, what? <laughs> and, and I always laugh and think, well, anytime some incumbent wants to take on an election against me, they're probably going to lose since oh, yeah. we carried nearly 50% of the state in 2022. So... I'm really happy to take the heat off of some of our candidates and help them across the finish line and happy to put the endorsement of Trump's campaign behind our candidates who vote in line with the people because I really believe that the the Trump campaign movement is really a populist movement. It's a campaign for the people, by the people, of the people, and that's what I believe and I think that's what Alaskans believe and Alaskans deserve. Mm -hmm. And so what I think is interesting as I've reflected on it is um, I'm happy to be able to lend my my name, my reputation to support candidates and make a change in Alaska. That's really what matters to me is making a change in our state. But it occurred to me that this this uh, Chewbacca endorsement seems to be a real threat to the far left yeah. who is coming out guns blazing this October and uh, to my great amusement. And it occurred to me that the reason that it's a, a severe threat is because it's come at a severe cost. And so I think back of the millions and millions of dollars that were spent against us and tar trying to tarnish our name and all the lies that were spent and the campaign that was lost. Mm -hmm. uh, someone said to me the other day, well, is there anything you can't do? And I just busted out laughing. I said, yeah, win elections. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Um, so I think that the the true cost, you got to count the cost as you step in and say, I'm going to use my voice. But this mm -hmm. is something that I've learned that anything worth value comes on the other side of suffering and yeah. and pain. Yeah. And trying to avoid a life of pain and suffering is actually avoiding a life of reward. And I have learned that, you know, decades down the journey, but I wanted to kick that to you because when I look at at youth in your generation, mm -hmm. I see people who um, seem to value, you know, life is supposed to be enjoyed easy. and yeah, easy. So what are your thoughts on that, Denali? Well, first I want to do you one better and say that not only are the rewards greater when you come out of the other end of suffering, but they're even more, they're better -er when you have a good attitude about it. Mm. So even after enduring all the hardships of the campaign, sure. all the media hits that I personally had just yeah you had, were smeared I was smeared as an underage kid that was not unimpactful to me as right. a teenager but when you get into college and I had a couple professors who recognized you because I was a poli sci major so they kept up with politics and you were one of the ones they knew about and they were like oh well you know since your mom is a politician, X, Y, Z, and my knee-jerk response was always, she's not a politician. Not she a never, politician. She never won. <laughs> never elected. And they would be so surprised that I had just such a could care less attitude about it. And it's like, because when you go through something as hard as that was, right. sitting there bitter and being like, well, you know, doesn't actually make much of a difference right. it's the people who are still smiling still laughing right. still you know what i'm gonna keep endorsing people i don't care if you're gonna That's blow right. up my phone about it that are the ones that make a difference now laughing makes a difference laughing makes a difference now yeah, why did you get into it in the first place we, we didn't run to be politicians no we didn't we ran to make a difference we ran to make a difference mm -hmm. so when you look at that compared to my generation my generation has been taught that the best way you can get what's coming to you is by being a victim is by mm. being oppressed. Well, mm. oh, I grew up struggling so much. My parents, you'll never believe this, they used to ground me. Oh, mm. my. It's that kind of thing. And, you know, everyone on the social media is jumping in the comments. You poor thing. How could they ever do that? You seem so sweet now. Well, yeah, because her parents grounded her when she was a kid. <laughs> but when you immediately jump the gun to I am a victim, I am oppressed, have pity on me, that seems a lot easier. People immediately hand you what you want 
but it's all short term. Mm -hmm. It doesn't last versus the people that I met who have had a lot of hard things coming their way. I'm going to just give another shout out. My really good friend, Chaz. Love you, dude. Chaz. Yo, Chaz. Chaz is awesome. Chaz had a really, really bad physical accident a couple Mm. years ago that totally derailed his life plans. And it took him a while to recover from it. But when I say to you that he is the sweetest, funniest guy I have ever met. Always positive. Always positive. Mm -hmm. He jokes about it all the time. And that makes such a big difference compared to somebody who may have had that same kind of accident and all those injuries and gotten bitter about it. It's such a good point. One of the things that has always kind of confused me, I mean, I've been making waves about my thoughts on politics and religion since I was a little kid, Mm -hmm. right? Ruining parties for a while. Uh, but I've never understood why people get so heated about it. Mm-hmm. Like it, when we disagree over yeah, what, are what, you, what you upset about, I don't know. Nobody fights over what's the best side dish at Thanksgiving. It's it, mashed potatoes. Well, I'm not even sure. Like we have debates in the house over what genre of food we're going with. Are yeah. we doing Italian steak or the traditional? Do like, we all like scream, cry and head to our room? Are we, we disagree? Are we ordering no. Thai food? <laughs> and it's not a knockdown drag out fight where people plant their camps and hate each other right. and disinvite people in the future. Right. But when you start talking about the, the best way forward to lead a people, mm-hmm. like what are the best? Do you, do you believe like someone asked me the other day, what's the difference between Democrats and Republicans? I mean, really tempting to say something D- like, to say something that that feeds Twitter. But the the basic answer is... Democrats want more government power. Democrats Republicans believe, want less. That's right. Democrats it's believe that, that government, centralized government solutions are a better path for mm-hmm. solving to, for solving the problems of people. Yeah. And conservatives slash Republicans, it's not all Republicans, mm-hmm. conservatives believe that community-empowered solutions are a better path right. for solving most problems for people. It's right. really that simple. It, it's the a, social issues are just such a gray area. I have a Democrat friend who is does not toe the party line when it comes to the Second Amendment. Like he believes that a lot of Democrats you don't. have the right to carry. But, so and then the, I have Republican friends who are pro-choice. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of blurring there. But the mm-hmm. basic difference is government empowered solutions or community empowered solutions. What I don't understand is why we declare war over it. Right. And like so so why can't why can't we just have honest conversations and kind of challenge each other or question or learn or debate? Because if we talk about food we're fine. If we talk about movies, we're fine. Like, fine. like, so for example, Star Wars or Star Trek, it's not a knockdown drag out fight. I mean, we do have very strong opinions in our family. It can get kind of heated, but we don't we have both in our family. Right, but we it's, I just don't understand why this particular issue becomes something that people are like, it's so swampy. I'm not going to engage. Right. Okay. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't, I why, don't. Why are you disengaged? Why? 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 It's, I think it's a really important question. So like in your class, why aren't people, why do you just assume that the vote is already done? I mm-hmm. don't understand. When you assume that, it is done. It is Congratulations done. Congratulations on right. fulfilling your self-fulfilled prophecy. Well, and I asked, I'm going to be asking this same question in our faith community. It's only about 20% of regular church going Christians who engage in the political process and vote regularly. Mm. Why? Why do you abdicate that role at the ballot box? Right. And a lot of people will say, well, I, I don't like politics. Uh, okay. I don't know a lot of people who do, do. like the actual involvement or um, the, I would say like the chess game that is yeah. politics. That's just our ADHD fixation. <laughs> now, yeah, that just happens to be our sport team of choice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? So a lot of people like to watch football or basketball or whatever. That's cool. We watch the debates like that. Right. <laughs> we, we watch politics. That's I get that. And that might not be for everybody. Just like I don't sit and geek out on the NFL and eat a I bunch can't. of popcorn and nachos. I'm just not that into it. That's right. cool. I understand that. But you still have a civic role. Like mm-hmm. ultimately, you're one of the players on the team. Right. And you you get a really important and critical role to do something about policy. And to me, it's not about pick a team and get grungy and get swampy. To me, it's like, do you believe in helping immigrants, orphans, and widows? Right. Do you believe in stopping human trafficking? Do you want to have a role in stopping the the opioid and fentanyl crisis? Do you believe in protecting people and helping people? Do you have a thought on what the best way is to do that? Right. Regardless of whether that's more government-empowered solutions or more community-empowered solutions, if you have any thought on that at all, if you think that you you should be be engaged in helping anybody ever then 
do something do about something. it. You know, a basic I'm just role. waiting for the left to start pushing narratives about how voting is racist or sexist or oh. ableist. Like, you know, yes, there's history of only white land owning men being able to vote, but I don't understand why women my age, blacks my age, people who were immigrants that came legally and got their you, green card. You like, qualify on all three of those. Uh, right? Still right. That's your whole family. They still don't vote. Why? Well, why would I? Like, well, I don't know. Maybe because you just got this right, like, less than 100 years ago. Right. And should probably, you know, use it before the government loses it. So... Yeah, most places in the world, you don't actually have the ability to have a say in this. And mm -hmm. uh, some people say to me, you know, I'm, I don't know that it would make a difference or, you know, like you said, it doesn't. Well, if we imagine a world when none of us, like if in America, none of us voted, what would happen? Isn't oh, that Lord. intriguing? Would we like to let the elites run that rampant? Yeah. Or do we want to still have some control over it? If yeah. your answer is, I want to rein in my leaders, please go and vote. I'm begging you. Okay, so Denali, wrapping it up, top yeah. reasons why you would give for voting. I, why would I give for voting? Okay, one, I want to make sure that the government stays in their freaking lane. I want to make sure that my voice is heard, not just the elitist. Okay, Thomas Jefferson, go on. <laughs> and I want to make sure that the policies and the people that I think are going to best represent me actually have a shot because I know what it's like to have you and your family on the line running for what you believe in, campaigning all day, every day to make sure that the voters have a fair shot at electing someone to office who represents them. And when you don't go out and vote for that, it is kind of like crapping on that sacrifice, not going to lie. It makes it really difficult to find other people in the future who are willing to do the same thing and stand up for what's right. And then where does that leave you in the next four to eight years? And then I would add for sacrifice, I want to honor what our veterans have done to give yes. us this country. Amen. And to protect and lay down their lives for our rights. Yes. And how important it is to honor that by just doing our simple part. If they can go into a theater of war to protect and defend our rights, then the we can go into a ballot box yes. to honor what they've done for us. Thank and all so, of you for your service. With that, this has been another episode of Stand. We appreciate you being with us. Kelly and Denali Chewbacca, you catch all of our episodes at standshow.org, and we will see you next time. <laughs>